How's it going everybody? Johnny Styles here with the Wellness Observer Live. And yes, we're live, pal. We're live right here, right now on Instagram for the entire world to see because as noted a few, maybe a week ago, I told you guys that I was going to be going live. And again, for those who've known me for a little bit, for a while, this, that, and the other, I don't want to be a talking head and I don't want to be here just talking and moving my head and just talking to you guys. If I do these live events, I want you guys to see what I'm talking about. I want you guys to see as I talk about fellow competitors, this, that, and the other. So, to the best of my abilities, without Instagram going crazy and canceling the account, I'm going to do this the right way, the right way they want to do it. Can I do it better? Of course I can. But I don't want to hack the system and, you know, we can... You know, something happens to the account and then we don't have, you know, the very best Wellness Observer live for you guys in, of course, professional wellness. Right now, I'm going to be putting on on screen exactly the, the topics that I'm going to be talking to you guys here on this live event. We got a lot of news to get into today. So, first off, I'm going to be talking about the IG threads, how, um, how will they work here for you guys for those of you who followed back in the forum days, and for those of you who didn't or followed back in the Twitter days, you better, you know, fasten your seatbelt because it's going to be raw and uncensored, and I'm going to be talking about that too. The Republic of Texas, as we all know, is going to be a packed show. Then we're going to be talking about, you know, Rene Jewett, Roxy. People are going crazy on my DMs, and they want my sincere you know, thoughts and opinions on her. Is she too hard? Can she win a show being this hard? Of course, I'm going to be talking about Shanique Grant, you know, ex-Miss well, oh, Women's Physique Olympia. And we're going to be talking about her transitioning to the wellness division. I'm going to give you my honest thoughts and, you know, I'm going to call it right down the middle. Um, I'm going to touch real quick on the NPC universe. And I'm going to end it with, you know, why smaller girls have won the last couple of shows. It's very easy and, you know, it's very down to the point. All these girls that have won, you know, or they have placed kind of well that are smaller, they are placing the way they're placing just because there's one factor in there. And, of course, I'll say it till the day I die, size does matter. And in the wellness division, it absolutely does matter. So without further ado, we're going to start off with a with the first, the real first um, topic of this, which is the IG threads. As you guys saw, we started out today. It's basically Twitter for Instagram. And back in the day, we used to have the forums. And back in the day, when we covered shows, the forums were the place to be during the play-by-place, meaning when the competitor came out, you t I typed in the name, and I told you guys kind of the whole thing with the five-star ratings. You know, how does a, this competitor look? The tanning, the makeup, the hair, the presentation, all of this, the posing, that and the other. And you would get them in real time. So, for this week, if, you know, if you have a live feed from these competitors, you can check on the actual thread slash the Twitter of Instagram. And I will be posting as the competitors come one by one. And you'll get real time you know content on how the competitors look especially like that first call out all this and all that that ja all that jazz all of this can only help competitors can only help you guys at home follow each and every single event it'll be really cool you know it's it's a good community to have and it will basically work from it. every now and then i'll throw a jab at you know some of the competitors just like i did today again um, something that I want to touch on too, and I'll, I'll write it in the thread. It's basically just because you won your master show and you turned pro in a master show doesn't mean you're you're hundred percent you know ready for the pro stage. So those you know little jabs that I used to do here and there, I'll be doing those once again, and it's it's a whole sloth of information right there. So for the Republic of Texas, here we go with the Republic of Texas. We have. Two, four, six, eight, ten, almost twelve competitors right there. Um, I don't expect a lot, but I do expect 
as I mentioned in the in today's post, of course, uh, Michelle Ibata was going to be there. She's super powerful. Renee Jewett jumped to the show, which a lot of people thought she was going to do Chicago. And then a lot of people thought she was going to do Tampa. She jumped in. She's been ready for months. So might as well see her in there. I am going to be talking about at least, at least three or four competitors that I think we're going to be doing, you know, pretty well. And, you know, maybe some surprises because we never know what's really going to happen. But the first person that I want to talk about is Victoria Puentes. Of course, you guys saw me interview her back when she won the Battle of Texas couple of years ago and she looked phenomenal. Victoria then took a hiatus and um, it was she became an enigma. Um, nobody knew where she was, where she's training. She got sponsored by Evogen and right now it seems like she's got her groove back together and it seems that you know she kind of has that old old Victoria look to her. The problem with Victoria is that leading up to the show she can look great and then at the show she just can turn into nothing so we're gonna have to wait and see what's gonna happen with Victoria Puentes she looks pretty good I, I I'm happy that I'm seeing some lines in this picture that she just posted you know and in reality she just has to maintain all that physically in person she looks really good you know she has all the right tools to make it in a lineup it's just a matter of getting in shape because I've seen her before looking great and then at the show everything goes off the rails next up we have the one and only Frida Paulson you guys have seen her I've posted her Frida Paulson has worked her ass off literally from the old school bikini towards the wellness I think you know does she need a little bit more time sure but that's what the sport hobby we call sport is all about it's about transitioning. It's about getting better each and every single time. I do know that she did a show the other day, and it went, didn't go the way she wanted, of course, because she probably wasn't planning for that show. It was just a show that she decided to do just for the hell of it. What does Frida have to do? Honestly, just come in harder. That's all she needs to be doing right now. Um, don't expect her to, you know, to get big in the next few days or whatever. Just, you know, she has the size that she has put on in a few you know few long months of this preparation and when you look at her from the back I'm gonna post a picture here from the back she looks pretty good honestly you know this is this is a good package for Frida Paulson can her glutes get still be bigger yes can her glute and ham you know look fuller you know kinda like thicker in this in this shot absolutely the calves are still there hashtag calves matter so it's going to come down to see how she looks once the tan is on and once she is right there on the stage with all the other girls. I expect, for the love of baby Jesus, I expect that Frida Paulson will be a little bit harder in all the right places. Let's see, let's see who we have next. Next up, um, I think I like Tracy Williams. You know, Tracy Williams, I remember seeing her a year ago and she still looked very figured to me but as time passed on I believe you know her delts are still pretty big you know, cannonball delts and I believe that she's transitioned a little bit more into wellness um, I would like to see her on stage she is truly a dark horse don't count her out because sometimes in the right place in the right time she can do very very well so don't count her out yet because in reality you don't you don't know how the other girls are going to look and if one girl is not looking in tier top shape um, she can squeeze in right there no problem the clear fan favorite all over the world is Michelle Ibada right there you've seen her transition she's done one hell of an off season Michelle Ibada went full ham hashtag glute and ham from the Godfather of Wellness, she did take time in the off season to prepare for this season, and the improvements are ridiculous. Okay, when you look at her from the side, her glutes looks like it, it kind of pops out in a ridiculous manner. Some people don't even understand how her glutes pops out. If you see her in person, her back shot is beyond crazy. Okay, 
beyond crazy. Those glutes are one of the most bigger slash fuller glutes in the entire professional league. When I say she's the heavy favorite, she is the heavy favorite leading up to the show. I expect, I expect to see her even bigger than last year and even better than years prior. So we got to have to, you know, wait and see because she will be facing finally none other than Renee Jewett. Roxy, as we all know her. If you don't know, I told her back, I don't know, three, four years ago, the story, as the story goes, in the lobby of the Tampa Pro Hotel, the Hyatt. I saw her in the lobby and I told her straight up, you should do this class when it comes, because I know, I know the godfather of wellness knows that this class is coming to America and you don't need to do anything else. Eventually, she did end up doing the class. She did end up winning her pro card and she did the right thing. She took time off to develop, to learn, to squat, to leg press. Of course, she is married to somebody very knowledgeable in John Jewett. And as a power couple, they help each other achieve greatness. Now, many of you have told me in my DMs, she is too hard. She is freakly, freakishly too hard. She is beautiful, but she looks too hard. This, that, and the other. Listen to me, everybody. Does she look too hard in some poses, in some pictures, like this one, for example? Absolutely. Does she represent the class right now? Yes, she does. Is she too hard right now? For those of you that don't know, sometimes, sometimes in this hobby we call sport, you need to get this hard. That doesn't mean she's going to translate that on the stage. That doesn't mean that she's still going to look this hard on stage. They probably have a plan set out in order for her to get filled up and look, you know, in that famous happy medium that we strive for in a wellness, in a professional wellness stage. You know, it's hard. You got to go to a dark place in order to get this freakishly hard conditioning and then you can bounce back from it. So, as I've said before and I'll say it again, you know, you got to be careful with what you see online. That doesn't mean that Roxy is going to go super freaky hard on stage. That just means she's in freaking good shape. She is in crazy shape and it's better to be crazy shape before the show then, you know, to push it next to the show. Some competitors, some competitors need that. You know, some people's bodies are different. Some people need to get this freakishly hard in order to get filled up and, you know, get levels of fullness. I do believe um, Roxy has progressed in her posing. Her posing wasn't the best, especially that front pose. Not this one she's doing here, just a regular front pose. She is not very good at it, but she can twist and turn and make you look really, really, you know, flabbergasted when you see her on stage. She is a lot better. So I expect her and Michelle Ibarra to go right there, you know, in a punching world, <laughs> in the, the women's division. So it will be really nice. And again, this will enable, enable Roxy to see where she's at, okay? Um, remember, she took time off to achieve this look. And I believe that she still thinks she's too small. And we will only find out when she steps next to other professional wellness girls. So keep it locked here for the newest updates in the Republic of Texas. J.M. Manning is going to be there take some cool pictures. Will is going to be there. The entire gang, Freddie, throws up great events in Texas. If you're in Texas, um, check them out. And um, yeah. Pretty cool shows up in Texas. So I like Texas. I've been there a lot of times. Next up, we're going to be talking about the ex Women's Physique Olympia, Shanique Grant, the prodigy. And um, a lot of you wanted me to touch on the subject. I was going to do a long video, but I am might as well just do it with you guys here live and in person. I followed Shanique. I saw her come up the ranks when we were in New York, when she was just starting up, and you could see in those first shows that she did that she had the genetics to be 
a freak and it's just one of those genetic freaks of life that you know you just by looking at her you could see the potential on this amazing athlete i as i've said before and i said again i have nothing but respect for these athletes especially Shani grand which i've known her since the very start and um i remember when she did figure and she just demolished figure and crossed over to physique eventually winning the women's physique olympia she is the youngest women's physique olympia in the history of the hobby we call sport and now after a couple of years of being in the sidelines because a retirement she decides to jump into the wellness division i broke the news here and again i'm, I'm, I'm happy when a when a ex olympian decides to throw her hat into the class that we know is the very best in the world and you know some you know you know you know something's cooking right the problem with Shanique Grant is that it, this is not going to be easy this is not going to be an easy thing no matter how genetically gifted she is her legs still have to you know get filled up they need to get to be big Shanique Grant looks like an athlete looks like a track star okay when she did figure when she did women's physique she embodied what looked to be like a track and field athlete so her quads are amazing her quads are just up and down especially in this picture from the side they have meat but they don't have enough meat okay so to for her to think that it's going to come in here it's going to be easy i'm not saying that but it's not going to be easy from the back you can see this all day long her glutes no matter how genetically gifted she is she needs to have bigger glutes a lot bigger glutes and of course she needs help from baby jesus for the hashtag calves matter i don't know what she's gonna do but she needs to grow them calves in order for her to be you know very competitive against i don't know the brazilians of the world this is not gonna be an easy show for her to do and for her to come in here and you know try to win olympias I am not saying that, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying I'm not wishing her well. I'm just saying she's, uh, she's got a lot of to work to do. And hey, you know, for, for those who know her, know that, you know, she's pretty good at training. She seems to have her head back in the game. But right here, you can see that her upper glute needs a lot of work. And from the side, she does have that hamstring right there. But the quads... The filled up muscle you know she does have a tiny waist i'll give her that i've seen her millions of times but these girls that are going to be standing next to her they're not going to be x figure girls or x women's physique girls going to a wordless look these are going to be professional wellness that have been doing this for many many years and to achieve that look it is not going to be easy so i wish her the best does she have a lot of work to do oh boy you can bet your bottom dollar that she does have a lot of work to do. From the NPC universe in Teaneck, New Jersey, um, I want to say I want to only impress with two girls. The girls that won, Siobhan Marie right here, and Amanda, the girl that won the overall. I will say one thing perfectly clear. I was not impressed with anybody else in that lineup at all. Some of the girls that competed honestly had no business being in a national stage granted the world has changed the industry has changed a little bit but still you can tell that a lot of the people that were on that stage were not ready to become professionals but in my honest opinion Siobhan should have won a year ago a year ago she looked absolutely great she had all the tie-ins she even got a little bit bigger for the show so congratulations to her I believe that the girl that won the overall amanda right here she's from brazil as well as noted i believe she is ready for a pro debut she is one of those competitors that not only won her pro card not only won the open not only won the overall she is ready to right now throw her hat into a pro show and see where she's at remember that's a good segue for all these new professionals to know where they're at because how would you know how would you know how you're standing next to Michelle Ibadan so next to Roxy 
next to the other girls that have won. So in that sense, I believe she's ready. I believe she's ready to be in a pro show. So I hope to see her in another professional event because she is ready in my opinion. Again, the entire rest of the other wellness you know, professional girls um, that I saw. I mean, Katie Birdie was there, and I believe Katie did a good job. Um, she, she might need to take some time off to rebuild a little bit more, but I, I think, you know, the, the girls, Siobhan and Amanda, are the only two girls that are ready to go on the pro stage right now. So the last topic of the night, we'll be talking about, you know, the last two girls that have won shows, which I haven't covered really because the show hasn't been, it hasn't motivated enough to cover these shows. And I've been really busy trying to bring you guys something really cool. We'll talk about it later. Um, we have Lily Dong and we have Tiffany Sam. Um, Lily Dong and Tiffany Day both have competed against each other like three or four times this year. Eventually both winning shows respectively. And then, you know, one, the Miami show, which Tiffany won. Um, Lily plays second. The topic in discussion here is very simple. Why are these smaller girls winning this show, that show, this, that, and the other? It's not about the size. It's, it's blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be really easy. Okay, I'm going to answer this question in one sentence. And well, probably in one word, if you want to keep it relevant to the wellness division, okay? The reason these smaller girls are winning is very simple. It's because Giselle Machado is not competing in these events. Simple as that. I am talking to you straight to the point. If Giselle Machado was competing in these events, Tiffany and Liddy were not going to win these events. I have tremendous amount of respect for Lily Dong and Tiffany Sam. They've both worked their asses off to deliver a great package, but they are not up to par to a Giselle Machado. They are not up to par to a Cassandra Gillis. They are not up to par with the top three, four Olympians of the world. Okay. So what happens is when these bigger girls are not on, on stage, they can squeeze in similar to what Dexter Jackson used to do in a pro bodybuilding stage. Dexter Jackson wasn't the biggest guy, but he was always the most conditioned guy. So when the bigger guys were off, then the smaller guy came in and won the show. Now, what happens when they win and they say that, you know, a couple of people have said, you know, it's not about the size, it's not a size game. Of course it's a size game. The wellness division is absolutely about a size game. It's just when you have these girls competing and they don't have nobody else, or if, if they have a bigger girl that's not in shape, they're not going to get awarded the bigger girl, of course. Judges, like, like Molly now just said, judges can only judge what they have in front of them. And what they have in front of them are girls that are not that big. I will condemn um, Tiffany. I've, I've seen her, I think, in the past three weeks. She's gotten all carb, carbed up, carb crazy, and she does look a lot bigger. Now, she does know and she does understand that she needs to come in bigger for the Olympia. She cannot come in like she did in Miami. Absolutely not. And Lily, Lily is one of those competitors that has been keeping in really smooth, really slow, at least every single time getting better and better. I remember when people used to say that Lily would never make it. And right now, Lily has won the show and is going to the Olympia. She's like a pocket She's got a pocket wellness girl. So that's probably, you know, the simplest terms. The reason why these girls want shows is because none of the other hardcore, bigger wellness girls are just in there. If they were, it will be a completely different story. So that's pretty much it for that. So I hope I, 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 hope I assess the questions. I'm going to be answering some questions right here, right now. I have some of the mailbag questions that you guys sent me, so I'm going to be reading those right here. And if you guys have any questions, before I go, I'll be reading them once again. I have a question here saying that, um, is Isa Pereira Nunez going to do the Olympia this year? 
Yes, um, at the moment, the first three or four spots at the Olympia automatically qualify for the next year's Olympia. So, Isa Pereira Nunez, if she doesn't want to do any shows, she want to get ready for the Olympia, she doesn't have to do any shows. She can just go straight into the Olympia and that will be absolutely no problem. Let's see, what else? Does Jarisha Ayana compare? <laughs> you guys love me talking about the Ocho Jarisha Ayana. At the moment, I don't know absolutely nothing about anything about the Ocho. I do know she got a new, a new supplement sponsor, which I believe most supplement companies work that way. Most supplement companies, you know, they'll give you a sponsorship, but they will like to see your face more. They will like to see your face in a, in a professional show. If that's part of her deal, then we'll see her soon. If not, then we don't know where we're going to see her. So I really have zero, zero idea when she will be doing the next show. So at the moment, she is not qualified at all for the Olympia and she would have to do a show. Let's see. The, um, is the Tampa Pro happening? Yes, the Tampa Pro is happening. The Tampa Pro is happening. I will try my very best to be there and get you guys all the cool interviews. And it's always a good show. It's always a, a fun show. And that's, that's pretty much it for that one. Thoughts on the Universe winners? I just talked about the Universe winners. Um, we, we, it was part of the whole live Basically, I wasn't impressed with anybody else, just Siobhan and Amanda. And I, I believe Amanda, the overall winner, absolutely can do a pro show. She can absolutely go all in and try her very best with the professional girls. Let's see, I got another question here. What do I think about Alexis Adams at the current moment? I don't know if you saw, you guys saw my post in the story. Alexis Adams, which I truly love and adore. I've had her many times. She fights with me in this, in this, you know, friendly fire we have. Because she also comes from a, a smaller girl, you know, body into what she is today. If you see that pose of how Alexis looks now, she, if she can maintain that size, shape, and structure leading up to the Olympia, that means do not lose that size and just lose the body fat. She can be... Amazing, and she can do really, really good. She cannot afford to lose that size. She cannot afford to look smaller on stage because she knows, she knows that her body can go up and down, you know, in, in many different ways. But um, I, I like her. I, I think she's great. I think she's great for the sport industry, and um, I don't care if she fights with me. She's. I will still go down fighting. That you know, size does matter, and it is what it is. Early prediction for who's going to win the Olympia. At the moment, at the moment, it's going to be really hard to dethrone the world champion, Francia Matos. But I can assure you that that top three lineup is going to change. You are not going to see the same girls in that top three. So be very, very aware of who you have in that top three lineup. No other way to put it. You will have Franciel there. You will have a few new girls up there. Let's see. Grecia Gutierrez. Yes, I posted her. I post uh, my thoughts on the Junior Natch overall winner, Grecia Gutierrez. I posted her and I think she's great. She's very short, um, but she packs on a lot of muscle. She is also a girl that I would tell her to, to, to probably Tampa Pro. That's a good show for her to, for, for her to do. And she's, I believe she can do good, you know, it's, it's harder, it's harder when, when you don't know who you're against, them, when you are battling a smaller national show and then jumping into a pro show. I do know some of the girls that are doing Tampa and it's going to be extremely good. It's going to be one of the best shows because I'm telling you, some hardcore competitors are coming straight out of the entire world, not just America. So, um, I still have a few of the mailbag questions here, but if you guys have, you know, questions, you can send them here. I will be keeping you guys up to date because the hashtag Cavs Matter movement is stronger than ever. And finally, 
finally, this is happening thanks to you guys. The Wellness Observer Lives merch store is going to go live and you guys are going to be having freaking awesome apparel for you guys to wear, proudly represent the class and show the world your true colors, especially if you guys have calves, okay? It'll be really cool. Thank you guys for supporting because hashtag calves matter. And two things I want to say real quick because I don't want to give much too much away. But when I came up with this idea of merch for you guys and getting you guys feedback, I wanted to do something really cool. It's not about making apparel that's just a parody or it's just something that you can smile about sure you're gonna have your your cool clothes and your cool sayings on my hashtag cast matter glued ham the peach all of this and the other but i also wanted to do something i also wanted to do something serious something for everybody that embodies what a professional wellness girl should look like you know in a world of brands that represent animals and represent sky and represent earth and represent this that, and the other i think i found a happy medium on something that you can wear and represent the power of women in this class because remember the girls that i do believe in the girls that i support are 100 wellness girls which i do believe are the strongest girls in the world not only in life but on stage and in life as well so i'm gonna be showing you guys a little bit of you know of the update now you know we are in the sampling state of business because again i don't want to bring you guys just a, anything cheap at all it, it doesn't make any sense for you guys to to buy something that you're not proud of and it doesn't make any sense so it's gonna be awesome you guys are gonna be really happy and you all are gonna look really cool and more importantly if you guys were to tease this that and the other i will find a way to get you sponsored and come down here to florida to do a photo shoot and have all the cool apparel and you can show the world how cool you look in a professional wellness apparel so keep it locked to the wellness observer life i hope you guys liked this live chat room right here we did amazing and as you guys saw each and every single time i was talking about it i was showing you the real facts raw uncut uncensored for everybody and their mom to see so this has been johnny styles the godfather of wellness follow me on the threads because i'll be posting raw and uncensored for everybody and their world to see because this is your number one source for all things professional wellness and you know it youtube as well itunes spotify the whole nine yards keep it locked here i love you guys thank you oh yes the nostradamus of wellness it's right here again keep it locked so my prediction probably is gonna be michelle Ivada and renee jewel let's see what happens keep it locked to the ones that are alive and i love you and i'll see you very very soon let's do this <laughs>